Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 75 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jadicat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Last time, I showed you the basics of fish breeding. Between episodes, I was planning to breed myself a clownfish. Then I started doing it, and I realized that if I'm going to be able to do so, I'm going to have to take a few days off of putting up videos for me to be able to get that complete. It is a very long process. If you want to breed a clownfish fresh to be able to use a celestial mirror before the end of the series, I recommend you start very early on. Instead, I'm going to use a bit of a shortcut. You'll notice it is currently dawn. Between dawn and noon, it is considered the dawn of the day by the Mariculture mod. If you remember, looking through fish and breeding, maybe, there we go, if I go over to fishing, it will tell you every fish can be caught alive, but only under very special conditions. Well, the very special conditions for the clownfish in this particular pack and only this, this pack are between 48 and 64 Y level at dawn. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to clear out these squids that have spawned. And I'm going to use my bound rod and try to get myself some clownfish. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to cut to the next dawn and I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to keep doing that until I have the clownfish that I need to continue this build. So, activate my bound rod. Grab a bunch. One raw clownfish so far. Ow, that hurt. Doesn't look like I have any yet. But in any case, I will keep doing this until I have myself some clownfish and you will see on screen when I acquire them. So I apologize, but this is necessary. And I have a clock with me to tell me when it gets towards noon so I can know when to stop and wait for the next day. So actually, I'm just going to keep right clicking until I see a clownfish because fish stay alive if they were going to be alive until you pick them up for the first time. Oh, I think I see one in there. Hey, look, I got a live blue tang out of that. So as you can see, all kinds of fish can come in this, in live versions. That's what I'm trying to say there. Unfortunately, no live clownfish yet. And only the one blue tang. Looks like a couple of raw man of war. So yeah, you get the idea. That blue tang was something that I was working very hard to get. Well, guess what? I found a live version by fishing here at this time. And oop, there's a clownfish. Still raw. More raw clownfish. Oh, but there's a... Oh, no, that's a raw Siamese fighting fish, which is a shame, but that's okay. So yeah, I'll keep working on this. Once I find myself some live ones, I will be right back. Got one. Just one so far, and I've burned through a lot of blood shards to make this happen. However... I also got a whole bunch of the building blocks, some Siamese fighting fish, some blue tang, and a qua. Koi? Koi, yeah. Uh, you can basically get all of these that you need if you're willing to hang out and do some fishing at the right time in the right place. So, uh, oh, also, if you need to mass produce blood shards for this process, you can use a master blood orb with an imbued slate and a weak blood shard to make five more. You need to make the imbued slates, which is a bit of a pain, but automatable. So I'm going to continue. I'm going. What I'm doing is basically anything that is not a clownfish, I'm dumping onto the ground to turn it raw, and then I'm dumping those into a chest so that I can later convert them into fish oil. And then I go back down and I do some more fishing as long as it's the right time of day. Once it's not the right time of day, I basically just wait through the night until the right time of day comes back around. So, I'll be back as soon as I get myself a male, because I now have everything else that I need. There it is, folks. The male clownfish that I've been waiting for. I have gone through literally two and a half stacks of blood shards to get this guy. I have lots and lots and lots of raw fish hanging out. About to create even more. And just crazy times happening. So, we're finally there. We finally have the fish that we need to actually make the Celestial Mirror. Partially by cheating. I mean, 
it, it's not cheating in that it's in the game. It's just not quite intended in that this mechanic may be removed at a later date. I have no idea where a couple of extra cooked pork chops came from. I can only assume that a pig accidentally got hit by lightning. So, if I grab my female clownfish and my male clownfish, and I get them into one of these fisheries that I have going over here. Uh, you know what? These guys are... it's too hot for them. Uh, can I pull that out and have it be okay? No, now it's too cold. Darn picky fish. We're going to get these clownfish set up. I will get that done off camera and get them producing. I'm not actually going to be setting up perfect automation for them. So the absolute most perfect possible automation for the fish feeder is to use the eternal life upgrades. Thing is, I don't want to go through the breeding chain necessary to get raw dragonfish and dragon eggs. Dragonfish are another end game type fish rivaling the clownfish. You can make them, uh, and they have a chance of giving you dragon eggs straight up. You can make them with a boneless fish and an ender fish, and then the boneless fish has a big long breeding chain, and so does the ender fish, though you get a few of those for free. And then the piranhas on one side. It's just, there is a crazy amount of breeding required to get to the dragonfish. I'm just not into it. I want to move on from fish breeding. So I'm going to focus on killing off those Siamese fighting fish over here so that I can use this fish feeder. And once I have them set up and the clownfish happy, I will be back. All right, folks, here's the deal. Normally, doing an LP like this, I don't want to cheat. But the clownfish naturally are lazy, which means zero productivity. They will not produce any items whatsoever. I'm tired of fish breeding. I could very easily, well, yes, very easily in a very time-consuming process breed them with any of the others that I have that have productivity normal or hard worker. I've actually been through a few generations of minnows and clownfish trying to get some extra males and females on both sides to attempt some breeding, but honestly, it's not fun anymore and I'm putting myself through the motions just to say I did it. I managed to unlock Koi from breeding together the Blue Tang and the Siamese Fighting Fish, but I don't even have any extra Ender Fish to breed with them to get more Clownfish. And at this point, it's just the, the return on investment is not there. So normally you would need to breed your Clownfish with some other fish to get that productivity off of Lazy. And while I was about everything. I did make the fish scanner. Here's the information you can get by putting a fish in the scanner. Nothing else is needed. It will tell you the active and inactive genetics of every type. I'm not entirely certain what the area does, but it does tell you exactly how many water blocks, the food usage, the productivity, fertility. The higher this is, the better. It can go up to 5,000, and that's how many fish eggs are inside of it. Every fish egg individually has a very tiny chance of producing a fish, the lifespan is in ticks, so that 8,400, if divided by 20, gets you 420 seconds, or about 7 minutes. So, there's your fish information. Now, because I do want to show you the jewelry stuff, I am going to give myself the two magic droplets that I need to do that before the end of the series. Because, honestly, I would be at this for quite a while to get myself what I would need to show this off. And I'm just kind of done with fish breeding at the moment. If I had started it earlier in the series, I think it would have been something fun to work on throughout and come back to a few times. At the moment though, uh, I'm not feeling it. So let me grab my blacksmith hammer and get my magic mirror tuned up to full. There we go. And let me show you why I wanted the celestial mirror in the first place. If I look up the celestial mirror, I'm gonna need to make myself, uh, luckily I have the nether star, I'm gonna need some more of those storage bookshelves. So three of them, wait for those to craft. And I need golden thread, which I'm gonna need the 
polished sticks for, which I have plenty of polished logs, but no polished sticks. So, for, whoa, oh well, whatever. It all works out. There, now I have plenty of polished sticks. A couple of golden thread. And the two magic droplets that I just cheated myself in. And one magic mirror. Creates the celestial mirror. And you'll notice the celestial mirror has a 33 on it. The celestial mirror works exactly like the magic mirror, but it goes from 33 levels all the way up to 60 levels. And that can get you some very high end enchants indeed. So I'm going to go grab some purple pearls because I am going to deck myself in purple if I have any say in the matter, and I do. And I'm going to make myself a necklace because I have every other type of jewelry on already. And to make the purple pearl necklace with golden thread, just like this. Oh, I don't have any of the golden thread. Oh, you know what? That's because it uses the crafted gold thread. Yeah, not just golden silk. Things get expensive as you go up. What happened to my pearls? Didn't I have more? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to actually get to get this red pearl out of here too. And I'm going to go give this 536 wax on the anvil, and I'll be back in a bit. I'm probably going to need to make another blacksmith hammer while I'm at it. All right, folks, I have my purple pearl necklace and my celestial mirror set to 60 levels. Let's grab a few more levels out of my liquid experience tank and show you what this can do for me. So, with all 60 levels applied, I get Fall Resistance 4 and Leapfrog 4. Not the most fantastically awesome enchants ever, but uh, Leapfrog 4, I believe, if I take off my... There we go, this is Sigil of Haste. I can still... Maybe not. Hmm. Oh, I have to be holding the control button to activate the jewelry. And now I can jump quite high. And I believe that it will actually stack with the boost. Oops. Allowing me to jump to simply ludicrous heights with just a simple push of the space bar. Very useful early on. Uh, the fall resistance does exactly what you would expect. If I take off my air sigil and I jump off of this, no damage whatsoever. And you can see that this necklace is not taking any damage from that. My bracelet is, however, taking lots of damage from the Restoration 3 that is on it. So now I am immediately repairing everything, and I can run rather quickly without my haste sigil even being active. And then with my haste sigil being active, I can run even faster, which is pretty fantastic. The other jewelry options are there's, you know, a lot of them. If I take a look in... Where's my book go? There he is. In my book binder at the Sea Witch's Guide, you can see that I could get extra damage just for punching things. I could poison anything that I punch. I could light things on fire with my punches. Never Hungry is a really fantastic enchant to get early on in this pack because you can literally... Um, get yourself set up to never lose hunger, only your jewelry will take some damage. Now, repairing these guys, I don't know if that's quite possible. Let's see. We can try both purple pearls and golden silk in the anvil. So, I wanted some of the golden silk, which I don't have any on me at the moment. Golden thread, golden silk. So, if I put the purple pearl bracelet in there with gold thread, no dice. With gold and silk, still no. With purple pearls, no love. So it looks like the only possible option is to make a brand new one and work it on the blacksmith anvil or to put the, whoops, did not mean to toss that away, or to toss this itself onto the blacksmith anvil and use a whole bunch of experience whacking at it. However, Given some of the effects that this thing can have, for example, endlessly repairing all of your items or making sure you never run out of food, it seems like a good trade-off to me to need to do a little bit of manual maintenance on these guys. Whoa, got stuck on the anvil. But you'll notice that with something this powerful, you burn through a lot of experience pretty quick repairing it. So, there's a trade-off. You need to have a good, reliable source of lots of experience if you want to do this. And the whole 
extra, uh, I mean, uh, open blocks, XP tanks and such could be what you're looking for, but you might want something a little more automated refilling than I currently have set up where I need to go turn on a mob spawner. Wouldn't be too hard to set up essence berries going into that system. So there is your finale for the Mariculture fish breeding and jewelry system. I'm sorry that I had to skip the end of it and cheat cheat that little bit, but honestly, getting hardworking or normal onto the clownfish, it was just a tedious step that I was not interested in doing, and I figured you guys didn't want to wait another day while I got that sorted out. So where's that leave us? Well, we've done pretty much everything at this point. We have completely completed almost every quest. We have touched on every single mod that is in the pack, and we haven't explored them all as deeply as they possibly can be, but we've done a lot. I think it's that time. I've been very lucky in the past 48 hours with my white focuses, and I have received one extra nether iridium. I want you to understand exactly what that means. In 48 hours of eight lasers running full time at full speed with the highest possible chance of generating another iridium. And that means that basically I'm getting another ore out of them every two seconds or so. I have received a single nether iridium in that time. If you haven't started working on getting this stuff yet, do, do it now. I have been very lucky. So, let's see exactly what we get when we complete Jack of All Trades from the end. Consume four nether iridium ore. Manual submit and claim the largest reward in the map. Ten lives brings me to a total of 131 points for the pack. The legendary reward pack in this case contains a bunch of power catalysts for blood magic. Not bad, not bad at all. Going to dump those into my quest rewards bin. And then the strong boxes. Each strong box contains more strong boxes because inside of these is every single reward in the map. I'm going to start setting them up over here and slowly unpacking them. And if I look in here and I hold shift to look at it, well, here's a whole bunch of different glass and wood and bricks. In here we have fireworks, one lie, the lie being the cake. This is the, you know, the joke rewards, the rain muffler and sound muffler, TNT, your infinity. I'm glad I didn't find much in the way of diamond horse armor. In here we have mysterious magnets, magnum torches, cinder pearls and shimmer leaf. Everything that you could imagine getting out of the Reward bags comes in these boxes. So Ender Lily Seeds, Jaded Princesses and Drones. Yeah, everything. And that is your reward for completing the entire map. You also get an extra resonant strong box, which is empty. You can imagine the amount of storage you get out of this. One thing that I do want to get, wand focuses. Those are kind of fun, but that's not what I'm looking for here, actually. One cool, fun thing that will be helpful for any of you who decide to download the, uh, the final map, because I will be including a link to download this final map. Oh, maybe they don't have any. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. That one, too. So these are full of Thaumcraft rewards. And I'm going to use those Thaumcraft rewards to supercharge my... Uh, Got stuck on that spell a bit. Supercharge my wand charging station with these extra aura nodes. Because 16 aura nodes will go a long way towards making my wand charging even better than it already is. Put you down. Put you down. I'm really hoping to get... Oops, that was a little out of place, but that's okay. Um, I believe I don't... There's a couple of aspects I don't have of which I think air is one, and I did just get a little bit of that. Awesome. Put you there. More air! Yay! I still don't think I have any ignis over here. I've got a tiny bit, but I can do better than that. And I'm going to. I hope. 
No, oh, there's some Ignis. Fantastic. More Ignis. All right, I'm going to need to get some blocks to be able to place the rest of these in a way that you can move them later if you want to. Fantastic. More Ignis? No, no such luck. That's okay. So that is every quest that is currently available in the map. It is not every quest that will ever be available. I know for a fact that there are two more quests, uh, two more mods and quest support for them coming to the 1.6 version of this pack. So once those are available, I will revisit this and I will do more with this agrarian skies world. However, until they are available, this series is going to go on hiatus. It is going to be relegated to the someday when there's more content to pursue category. And I'm going to be working on something new. What exactly am I going to be working on? Well, you can find out later today in a vlog, po uh, vlog that I'm working on. Or you can come back tomorrow and see exactly what new series I end up starting. Hmm. Now... One neat thing about the Aura Nodes, there is a better dolly in Java that might be able to move them, and I want to see if it's possible. And that dolly is the Diamond Dolly. And there it is. Which is made with a regular dolly and three diamonds. Let's go find out if this can move Aura Nodes. I know that it can move spawners. Nope, won't move Aura Nodes. I've heard that there's a block in Open Blocks that can move them. But I honestly, I'm not even certain what it might be. Or maybe it's an item. Cursor pointer. No, none of these look like they would be useful for moving a aura node. The proper way to move one, since that one's a little out of place, I might as well get it into the proper spot before I sign off. You're going to want your robes because this is a very V-intensive process. And you're going to need your Thaumonomicon to look up the recipe for, here we go, node in a jar. I need eight orum and eight permutatio that I don't have. There we go, there's the orum, and there's the permutatio. Fantastic. This is just a bunch of, well, you can probably barely see it because it's so very faint, but this is just a bunch of glass in a structure around it and then some slabs on top and you're going to need 70 of each V. So I'm going to grab myself glass and slabs and I'm going to construct the node in a jar because that guy is in the wrong spot and that will not do. I'm not going to leave you guys a broken world with the nodes all in the wrong spot. That's hardly right. Be very careful not to accidentally break the node while you're doing this. So you need a full layer of glass underneath, a empty layer around the node, a full layer on top, and then you need to cap off the whole thing with slabs. Hmm, actually, you're going to need to move these nodes before, or I mean, you're going to need to move you can get all of the nodes moved, but because of I have them stacked so tightly, um, you're going to have to move all of them to move any of them. Like, I would have to move that one first to move this guy under here. So, that's a bit of an issue. You know what? No, no, he has metallum on him, and that's a useful aspect that I don't want to give up. Dope. Okay, let me sort this out real quick. I'll be back once I get things rebuilt. As usual, I've changed my mind. So I'm in the nether right now to collect myself a node from the wild. This is a bright node, as you can see from the big glowing spot in the middle of it. The primary advantage of the node that I have back in the room is that it provides a little bit of air and a little bit of ordo, but I already have lots of both of those. What I am lacking mostly is Ignis in the wand recharge station. So I'm going to grab this ore node right here and show you how moving nodes works. It's a pretty simple process, actually. All you need to do, like I said, encase it in some glass and add slabs to the top. 
And then you're going to want to right click on it with your wand. And even with a Thalmy Emboss Silverwood Wand and the maximum possible V discount available of 13%, you're still going to use most of your potential V. Give it a right click and it shrinks into a single item, the node in the jar. And then you can pick it up. Fantastic. Looks like this one was not damaged. Normally, you have a fairly good chance of damaging any node that you gather this way. And as you can see, even with full discount, this still used more than 50 V. You only get to do one before you go home and recharge. So, if I go home... Oops, dropped my warp book. Which then proceeded to disappear. Oh well, that's a different problem for a different day. So if I go home, then I run over here. I don't know why that vanished as soon as I accidentally dropped it. That's interesting. I can dump this into the world, not by right-clicking it like that, but by holding shift and right-clicking on the spot that I want it to go. Well, not shift. Hang on. Details are in your Thaumonomicon in case you're like me and you forget. Do, do, do. To free it, place it in the world, and click it. Click on it with your wand. So dump it into the world, give it a right click, and now the our node is out. While the node is in the jar, it cannot interact with the world. You cannot recharge from it, and it will not recharge itself. Well, you might be able to recharge from it, but I know the node itself won't be able to recharge. So I'll take a look at this, and you can see that it is quickly recharging. All aspects, fantastic. So that's going to be the wrap-up point for our Agrarian Skies series for the time being. As I said, I will be back once there are more mods and more quests added to this pack. That will come in the future. For now, though, thank you very much for joining me through 75 episodes of my very first Minecraft Let's Play. I really hope that you've enjoyed things. I'm looking forward to getting started on the next series which you will see the first episodes of coming up over the weekend. Uh, let's see. Start getting things put away. I am really fantastically enthused that things went as well as they did with this series so far. Everyone seems like they've had a very good time watching me derp my way through things. And I'm really glad that you guys enjoy my playstyle and my Let's Play styles uh, in particular. I'm going to leave you with a full map available for download with everything that I have accomplished ready to go. Anything that you want to do with that map, be my guest. If you want to jump in and start working on the quests from scratch with a huge advantage, that sounds like a great time, honestly. If I was watching me play this, I would probably like to jump in and derp around. Uh, if you guys need to use... Uh, well, here, let me make sure that you guys can actually spawn in the house properly. What I'm going to need to do is come over here, and I think if I do Jaded Spawn Set, that should reset the entire world spawn, dimension spawn. Everyone should spawn in the house. This is version 2.1.7 of the map, so it should work with this version and any above. It's not a perfect version. There are still some issues that are going to need to be worked out in the future, once 2.1.8 and beyond come out, I'm looking forward to getting back into this and working on some more quests with you folks. But for now, the server is shutting down and nothing will progress past this point right now until it is time for more quests to be added. So, thanks again for joining me. If you've enjoyed this series, please subscribe and watch for the next one. If you have not enjoyed this episode, please Tell me what I can do better in the future. And I will see you tomorrow for the very next uh, for the very first steps into a brave new world.